How we doing today, guys? Sam and Alex, the OG squad, is back oh, here yeah. at Fishing We're Report. Back. We've done it for a long time. Before we get started with that, we have our big snakehead kickoff tournament mm -hmm. start coming up this weekend. So, why don't you go over a few of the things we're going to have? Well, you know, it starts uh, tomorrow uh, and Sunday. Uh, seminars will start at 10 a.m., go until later in the uh, evening, I guess. Uh, we're going to have lots of guests in here both days, uh, a lot of cool topics to talk about and go over. Plus, all our snakes are also going to be 10% off. And remember, this is pretty much the last two days you can sign up for our snakehead, uh, you know, tournament, mm -hmm. which is going to start Monday and it goes all the way to the 24th of April. Besides that, uh, lots of great people here. We're going to have all kinds of things outside. Best time to really get stocked on all your snakehead stuff and Absolutely. get some information. So make sure you stop by and check it out. We're going to have, uh, yeah, I think we're even going to have food out there. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. And if you have any more questions about it, you can check our website or social media. We got all sorts of information mm -hmm. about it. But getting into the fishing report this week, Alex, me and your folks been getting out a little bit lately. Now, I've been doing a little bit more bass fishing. What about yourself? I've been doing some snakehead fishing here and there. Uh, of course, we had the cold front move in. Uh, we have no consistency on weather right now whatsoever. Yeah. So huh. we were getting started with a lot of different types of fisheries picking up here and there with some warm weather that we got in and then it just kind of shut it down. Uh, besides that, I mean, snakehead fishing, it was picking up and it seems like it, there's gonna be a little bit of a, you know, inconsistency here in the next few days, but it looks, it looks like next week it's gonna start to pick up again and we're gonna have probably some good fishing out there. Now the problem this weekend is gonna be the tides. We have super low tides uh, for this weekend. Uh, besides that, you know, some of these areas, especially in Blackwater, are going to be kind of tough to fish. Uh, but if you're going out there, cold weather means live bait or going to a finesse style bait. Yeah. You, me and you know that, you know, doing some bass fishing and anything in general, once you have those... Inconsistent weather, mm -hmm. cold fronts, warm fronts, just, just the fish really can't figure out what they want to do. Going smaller, going slower is really going to help you out. Yeah. So I know that this time of the year with stuff like this, you like to throw a lot of nets, um, some smaller paddle tails. Oh, so yeah. You don't need a big chatterbait or a big spinnerbait or anything like that quite yet. So maybe just a weedless hook with a three or four inch paddle tail can do you just fine. And then if you just want to sit around, find some kind of deeper water and throw some minnows out there, it can be really obviously that can be pretty productive. Most of the time, if you, if you do find an area where there's multiple fish, you can you know, fire it up and they'll start biting pretty well. Uh, and we do have minnows. We got so, tons of them. Damien just dropped them off, some of the biggest minnows I've seen all season. Oh, yeah, them destroyers, right? The biggest ones <laughs> I've seen all year came in. So besides that, let's talk about perch. I know that's what a lot of people have been trying to do, and uh, I know you got some intel on that. So perch fishing, it's starting to kind of fizzle out, but that being said, it doesn't mean that you can't catch them. They're just not going to be at the headwaters. They're not going to be at like the very far places like Red Bridges, areas mm -hmm. like that. If you want to push off fish areas like Tuckahoe, where it's not quite the upper, upper reaches, areas like Hillsboro, when this fish are, you're going to be catching them on their way out. When you're catching them on the way out, sometimes I like to, to speed up what I'm doing. Um, I might start throwing tiny little spinners or stuff like that because yeah. these fish have... They've, they've dropped the eggs. They really need to fatten up in order to get back to that shape they get need to be energy, in. Right? They need some energy. So they're going to be eating things, and don't be afraid to fish them a little quicker. I know a couple times um, over the past week I've caught them on, like, crankbaits bass fishing because they're just so aggressive. So yeah. it doesn't hurt to pick up the pace a little bit with some of your stuff. It still doesn't hurt to fish like a shad dart under a bobber, but just maybe pick up the retrieve a little bit. Try something a little bit different yeah. because those fish are active. And water temperatures yeah. are kind of warming up they're too. They're kind of warming up and it looks like somewhat steady over the next right. few days are going to get warmer and warmer. And speaking of perch, one thing we have to mention here, remember uh, rockfish pretty much will be closed this month yep. of April. Uh, can't catch and release, can't touch them. Don't even look, look at, at them. <laughs> but besides that, uh, if you are fishing some of these areas where you know you're perch fishing, you will start to catch more and more rockfish in there. Now remember, keep them in the water, throw them back pretty fast. I know some guys have issues before with that, where I guess some officers might believe you're targeting them and yeah. whatnot. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on it. Keep the fish safe. That's what the idea of mm -hmm. the closure is. To right. Those fish safe. So handle them well and just keep them in the water. Pop a hook out and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, besides that, let's move on to some other things. Catfishing. I know some of us here have been going out and chunking some blue cats. And it's been kind of consistent with that. Yeah. I know some areas are better than other, other areas. But uh, I know you and Jimmy went out here. 
a couple, a couple, guess, days, ago, couple and, days ago. And you can find them just about anywhere. You know, catfish mm -hmm. are one of those things that is pretty cool that, you know, kind of cool and kind of bad that we have the opportunity to fish for them just about anywhere we right. want. So if you have a place you can fish on the Magathy or the Severn or, or the Patapsco, all those areas are going to find catfish. But the main part of the bay, as well as just filled with them, um, shore areas you can go to, Mattapeak, Sandy Point, all those areas are going to produce a lot of catfish. Just fishing a really simple fish finder, Carolina rig, if you're familiar with that. And, and chunk bait. Now, it doesn't have to be LY. We've been fortunate enough to start getting that fresh LY in, which is, is a really, really nice bait right. for you. Um, if you can't get a hold of that, I know frozen herring's been doing well. Spot. Spot, uh, fresh shrimp. Those will yeah. be fine, too. So there's a ton of different baits out there. You don't have to just exclusively fish with your, your local bait fish. Right. Other than that, moving on to some of the trout fishery that mm -hmm. uh, DNR has blessed us with, mm -hmm. <laughs> with the stocking. Um, check the DNR website for all those stocking places. I know we had like kind of like the opening day, the other if you're closer one, keep an eye on those closures too. Make sure you know what areas are allowed to fish and which ones are not. You're supposed to wait until then, uh, until they open. But other than that, I mean, most places haven't hit once or twice, even three times yeah. uh, now. So I know a couple places where there's still some fish left over. Um, Savage Mills, uh, right over in uh, the Little Patuxent. Mm -hmm. I know there's a couple places that they hit down in like PG County, and I think everything on the Eastern Shore has been kind of not hit yeah. for a while now, but uh, if I'm not wrong, I think April, like around this time now, they kind of start opening up some other areas and stocking here and there. One thing to keep in mind is, is typically we're, we're using a lot of like the doe baits and the mm -hmm. baits and, and fishing them on the really, really tiny bottom rig, whether it be a Carolina rig or something like that. But but something to keep in mind of those areas that have been fished for a few days is is start transitioning into the spinners because those, those fish, you know, trout are really smart fish. Once they've been stocked in there and they realize there's not pellets everywhere, they do start to learn to eat little fish, little crabs, yeah. little crawl, crawl things. So fishing little spinners could be really good. Just start start transitioning to fish some of those baits that aren't just pellet baits, stuff like that, yeah. if you're fishing a place that's been hit pretty hard. And other than that, I mean, largemouth and whatnot, that's yeah. this is the time of the year to catch them, crappie especially. I know all of your ponds and places all throughout the state are going to be pretty consistent with crappie right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're in the ponds and a little bit east, you're just fine. If you're fishing tidal waters, you're going to have to move around. But that's been consistent here. And I know you've been doing bass fishing. That's been pretty pretty well. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I just like Tuckahoe is a great place, mm -hmm. but there's all sorts of those mill ponds are super productive this time of the year. It's that time of the year for those bass, they're in that pre-spawn mentality. They have to eat a lot of stuff to get that mm -hmm. protein to be able to spawn. So reaction baits, these baits are willing, these fish are willing to chase. So if you go to areas like that, um, chatter baits, spinner baits, things like that, if you can't quite get fit on those, maybe start downsizing a little bit, fishing like square bills. Right. And then if you have to, of course, finesse techniques, especially. Um, one thing I noticed a lot lately um, from some of the mill ponds I've been fishing is some of them have been a little bit cleaner than others. Those cleaner ponds, the faster retrieve seems to be doing a little bit better because those fish can see it from right. a long place away. But if you go to an area that's really dirty, you slow still down. fish those uh, reaction baits, but just slow them down a little right. bit so the fish you know, have time to feel them or, or get close to them. Yeah, see them. and other than that, don't forget about a good old pickerel because I feel like we'll forget about them once the winter's gone, but yeah, they're yeah, still yeah. there. They're still there and they're super aggressive this time of year. Mm -hmm. Once again, with those pre spawn fish, they have to eat. So, yeah. so they're eating, everything is really fattening up. It's a great time to get out there. Stay away from the bay this time of the year, let the rockfish do what they got to do, and then come on in and fish some of the yeah. rivers and stuff. So lots of options, catfish, uh, one thing we didn't really talk about, but shad fishing will mm -hmm. pick up once this cold weather kind of goes yeah. away, perch, and a lot of freshwater stuff. So, I mean, a little bit of everything. Uh, one good thing about the closure, it pushes us to kind of fish everywhere. And it does. Kind of do some different things. So. Other than that, just come by, talk to us. We can help you out with any anything you want to do out there. Awesome. Thank you, guys, and we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Have a good one. Have a good one.